right. Good morning. Good morning. Robert Murillo, broker associate with Team Moroa at Compass. Uh, license number BK3373543. Checking in with my partner, John. What's going on? Good morning, John Sapul with an MLS 1309244. How you all doing this morning? All right. We're live on the DM, Florida Real Estate. What's going on, John? I think everybody's good, man. It's all good, man. It's, it's kind of slow. Uh, not much on the on the sort of news front. Market is kind of reacting and ended, ended up yesterday up. Uh, mm -hmm. People were kind of feeling down optimistic <laughs> no they're feeling optimistic uh yeah, yeah. because the fed you know by raising the rates last week so now people think that the banking crisis is safe and they're starting feeling safe again and going back you know just okay they're gonna forget about it mm -hmm. uh and i was doing some reading yesterday i still gotta do some more research on it because there's not tons of information there yet mm -hmm. but the data starting to point to that uh sort of the next shoe to drop if you would on the with the banking industry it's going to be seems like it, it can be commercial real estate so uh, and and what i was reading you know something similar to the you know to the crisis in 2008 in residential uh something similar to that in commercial because and it makes a lot of sense uh, i don't i don't the digits i want to i, I want to say it was 68 billion in uh commercial loans that are going to do this year to renew mm -hmm. this year meaning they're uh, they're coming from adjustable arms so they're adjusting Mm -hmm. uh, most most commercial uh, loans are you know adjusted for the most part i mean there's obviously 30 you know but th that's a big that's a popular product is the five or seven year arms so the five year arms for 2018 are due this year and it's i believe it's 68 billion uh and the the article i was reading the piece i was reading it said about 40 billion they're they're expecting about 40 billion of that to be uh to be at risk because people are not going to be able you know not be able to repay vacancies are you know up a lot of empty office buildings people are just not renting commercial because of the pandemic they haven't gone back to work yet it's the office so that's a big that's going to have an impact because regional banks are the ones that hold most of that paper it's the yeah. smaller regional banks that do the commercial banking so they're already on the they're already upside down right you know they're they're illiquid as it is so you throw in defaults on these on these loans and that that could be the next thing that sets off the next sort of shoot a drop and you add that a uh, mini crisis that's also starting to brew in the car industry and there's going to be this the defaults are starting to to jump through the roof on uh, and repos and defaults on car loans uh, mm -hmm. and those are also you know in a large way handled by the smaller regional banks so that could be another sort of impact on the on the on the market so we'll see stay tuned for more yeah so so uh we spoke about how uh when the government was printing money and giving giving out the stimulus packages and whatnot um you couldn't necessarily qualify for a home on unemployment or the stimulus support, but you were able to qualify for the purchase of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So now at the time, oh, well, at the time that all of this was going down, uh, when people were able to go back to work, a lot of them decided they were making more money sitting at home, relying on the government support rather than going into work, right? So in a sense, they were relying on that money to uh, cover the cost of the vehicles that they're purchasing, let's just say, and other expenses. But now that that support is now coming to an end, it's it kind of like doesn't make sense that they have that payment and they go back to work and they're unable to afford those payments. I I have that story, and I read, you know, I, I, I saw an interview of somebody from the, uh, you know, from the car industry, uh, mm -hmm. and he actually took it a step further. Um, okay. And what what he says, you know, was happening was what you said, right? Everything you said. On top of that, that what what people did was not obviously not everybody, right? But a good number of people, what they did was they went bought the car. They gave them the car with, you know, they got the check, the stimulus check. They went in, they put that down and they got whatever they wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. Then after they got what they wanted, they 
called up the bank and said, hey, you know, the, the pandemic, because this was all during the pandemic, obviously. Uh, and they put the loan on forbearance, the payment on forbearance. So they got oh, the car, they kept the car, they drove the car through the pandemic. Now the pandemic's over, the money's out, and now they don't have money to pay for it. And that's, a, and that, according to this, this guy who's, you know, doing this interview, that is a, 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 it's a good number. It's a good, I don't recall what the, I don't know, I don't even know if he knew or if he said what the percentage was, but there was a good number of, of car loans in that scenario, right? So it's a good number of people that did that. So they never, they just bought the car and never made the payment. And, you know, they're, they're, the repo is starting, right? So that's kind of one thing. Uh, about three weeks ago, I read Ford uh, filed a patent to be able to uh, remotely shut off the AC on cars where people were late on their payment. Are you serious? Yeah. They filed a patent for it to be able to do that. Uh, so now somehow. they can control your fun. They can control certain functionalities of your car remotely. So yeah. if and you're they, late on your car payment and they the shut your AC off. Oh so, my God. So when you start seeing people rock, driving down here in Florida, you know, in the summer with the road just rolled down, yeah, you're, you're going to know why. Um, That's OD. It's That's crazy, man. Much. It's crazy. That's, <laughs> that's that's what. But you know what I mean. I mean that if they're doing that, it's. I mean this. It's it's building. It's bubbling. Like it's building you know, up. It's I there. saw. I saw this robotic tow device. Right. That literally, it, it somebody is remote controlling it, puts it underneath the car, and then has the ability to move Lift the it. car. No wow. truck. No nothing. Just a, a just a remote control like this, it slides up under the car. The the little pieces wrap around the wheels, lifts the car off the ground, and then now the remote control can maneuver the car wherever they need to maneuver it. Wow, ah, it's insane. I mean, it's but and that's I mean, if you're seeing like it's building up. I mean, this and this definitely. I mean, you you saw that the the dealers were you know the lots were empty. This guy was he went as far as saying that what dealers did. He said that the the dealers made the most amount of money they've ever made, you know, in, in cars in, in, during the pandemic. They've never made that much money. Yeah. Um, that when, you know, people utilize, like, they, you know, they just kind of, you know, learn the system. They're going with the money, no money down. The employment is not really checked. And they just, I mean, the same thing in the, the housing crisis, the same kind of situation. They give houses to anybody. They give cars to anybody. You mm -hmm. know, they made tons of money. Great, wonderful. But now we got to deal with it. And the banks are now going to, like that's just going to add on top of the banks. Um, yeah. and, and, and then, you know, what, what the, the issue with the stock market is a lot of that is, is there's a lot of bots, you know, artificial intelligence, they have algorithms and things that happen when this happens, they create sort of moves automatically. So mm -hmm. the market is sort of reacting. And then you got the people on the sidelines who don't really pay attention to the don't read, don't do this digging into this stuff. And they're just, Oh, the market's up. The, the crisis is over. The Fred's, you know, the banks are okay. Let me go back into the stock market. And that's going to create some problems. You know what's crazy? When when the whole forbearance situation was going on, I, was, I, I didn't even think about a forbearance on a car loan. I thought it was applying to mortgages only. Same here. I had no but idea. I feel, I feel bad. I, I, I should have not been making payments on my cars um, because I had the Jetta and I also bought a Toyota Tundra at the end of, it was the end of 2021 that I bought a Toyota Tundra. Um, and I bought it because I had, I had, you know, I had started a moving company, so on and so forth. And I, things had gotten a little tight at the beginning of 2022, but I also was running Turo as well. So what had happened was I actually got a client from Turo who was renting the truck on repeatedly, like repeatedly week after week and paying full price. So I got, you know, a little bit of an idea of what was going on with him and his business and his scenario. And, you know, it just, it happened to match that, like, that was an out for me. So I found mm. that solution. Like, all right, look, I'll sell you the vehicle. You're going to pay way less than buying a used vehicle. Right. And this is essentially brand new. 
and I was able to take care of that. But I had it, it never hit me that I could have done a forbearance. A forbearance, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't know that they were doing that. That's what this guy was, you know. And it's like people just, you know, they call the bank. I can't, you know, forbearance, stop making the payments. I mean, that's the same thing with housing, right? That's exactly what they did. Mm-hmm. And they, they, and now they're the the reality is set in, and the benefits have gone up. The final, the final benefit was about a month ago, three weeks, a month ago. Snap, stop the additional. Uh, benefit that they have been giving people mm-hmm. and you know which is almost 200 and change i mean it wasn't a but it was still you know it's a it's a part-time job you know what i mean i mean it's just oh yeah without job. having to do anything was it's the best part job. yeah so like now people got to focus on what they were passionate about or what their hobbies were they were more about their enjoyability versus having to go to work real life <laughs> So what's crazy also on top of all that was the used car value had gr- gone up dramatically. Through the roof. Through the roof, literally. Um, and no pun intended. <laughs> but um, so the used car value, used car values had gone up along with real estate, right? There was little to no inventory on the new cars, new vehicles. You had to wait so long. And at one point, I had gotten quoted on a on another Toyota Tundra truck that I was considering. And when they told me the price of the new Toyota Tundra versus the used Toyota Tundra, like they offered me both, I was surprised that the used Toyota Tundra they were more money than the new one was higher than the new one. So I was like, what? Like, what's going on here? And then also, I had a partner. I have a partner who. Um, at one point she was considering selling her truck, right? Uh, and at, at, there was like that, that shift just before the shift, they were offering her a sufficient amount to cover the balance. And then like just a couple weeks difference, the, the used car values went down and they were offering her way less. She was going to have like maybe uh, between eight to ten thousand dollar difference on that on that offer. Mm. So she was going to owe out. Long story short, we wound up selling selling it to where she only had to come out of pocket, maybe about two thousand dollars. So then there was that shift. So and it was quick. Yeah. What I had a buyer. I had a buyer. I was doing a loan for a buyer, and she called me out. You know, I was hey, don't don't buy any car, don't do anything, don't buy furniture after the closing, blah blah. And she called me up and said, "John, I I need to switch my car." I was like, "What's the matter?" I goes, "There, my car is upside down, and they give me five thousand dollar profit on my used car. Like I have to take it. I can't, you know." And she did mm-hmm. <laughs> five thousand profit on a used car where she was upside down before the pandemic. You know, the mm-hmm. car was worth less than what she owed. Yeah, they were five thousand on top, top on of top. what she owed. So she, yeah. she paid her debt and got a five thousand credit. So it's a new car. I mean, so so was she, she said, did, do it. Did, you got to do did it. it. Affect, did it affect her pre-approval? No, the pay, her, it didn't. You know, like we did the math approval. and yeah, we did. Obviously, if it had affected, it would have. She wouldn't have done it. But it, yeah, the math, the DTI worked out. The payment worked out. She was fine. But five grand on top of what she owed. So full, yeah. she got the paid off the debt, and she got a five thousand credit towards the new new vehicle. I'm sure mm-hmm. the how much they got her on the new vehicle. You know, I'm sure they got it back on the new vehicle. But that's the that's what they offered her, and that's what she took. It's insane. Yeah. So here's a quick golden nugget for people too. Um. So like for instance, that Toyota Tundra is still in my name, right? It's still in my name, and I'm going for a loan right now. However, what a lot of people don't know is that one, and you can confirm this, John, if your car payment is being made from a business bank account, right? If a car payment is being made from a business bank account for at least 12 consecutive months or more, then they don't look at that towards debt to income ratio. Is that correct? Only if the other person is on the note of the more of the of the car loan well no no I, even if it's your your personal your business account right like if if it was my business account then and and i'm paying it out of my business account they don't count that towards my personal debt to income ratio 
only if you're if the other person is on the on the loan of the car loan okay but check this out in this case it's the other person paying it and it's coming out of his business account if he's not on the car loan he can't can't do that like they can't what, exclude what it he so the car loan is in your name Robert, correct right yes yes peter smith is the other guy mm -hmm. peter smith's bank account or peter smith's business is paying for the car correct right so mm -hmm. every month for the past 12 months, Peter Smith's business have been paying been for, paying for the car. Correct. That's perfect. In order to exclude it from a real estate mortgage, it has to be the car note has to be in Robert's name and in Peter Smith's name or Peter Smith's business or Peter, Peter Smith has to be responsible for the payment of the car on paper. Because okay, so here's, 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 here's how here's, we bypass here's, that though. Okay, how'd you do that? Yeah. Let me see if I can learn something new. <laughs> an, expl an explanation letter. No, it doesn't work. Because here's, here's the theory when underwriting it, you know, and hopefully I'm wrong, right? But the, the, the yeah. theory in underwriting is everything in, in loans are, uh, everything is like income. It's a two-year, two year, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, somehow, I don't know how they decided that this was the rule, but everything is like the income needs to be likely to continue for three years. That's mm -hmm. literally what the, what the guidelines say, likely to continue for three years. Okay. So they figured that if the person has been doing it for two years, for the past two years mm -hmm. consecutively, it is likely to continue for the next three. Okay. There's obviously no rhyme or reason to that, but that's, that's how the rule is. So that's why employment, two years, two sources of income, two different jobs, two years, overtime, two years. Commission mm -hmm. income, two years. Everything is two years. If they have it for two years, it's likely to continue for three, right? So that's Everything is kind of based on that. So back to the car example. Mm -hmm. If Peter Smith, there's nothing obligating Peter Smith to pay that loan other than he's choosing to rent it from you or pay you for the loan. Mm -hmm. So if Peter Smith tomorrow decides, I lost my job, I'm not paying for the car. Who is the bank going to come after? Is the bank going to go after Peter and repo the car from Peter? Or is the bank going to come after Robert and, and repo the car from Robert? From, from obviously for me. So that's why the underwriter cannot exclude a payment from somebody because you're not responsible. Like you're responsible for the payment. If the other party is on the, is on the contract on the loan agreement on the right. Mm -hmm. And, and is making the, the, the contribution, mm -hmm. then it's then you're fine because that other party, if they're also responsible for making the payment and you can, with an explanation is, you know, Peter Smith has bought the car. He's responsible for the car and he's been making the payments. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's been making the payments. He's responsible. But if he's yeah. not responsible, there's nothing to make him make the payments and somebody has to make. He's the payments. responsible, but he's not being held responsible. He's not responsible. Yeah. He's responsible to you. No, no, that's not, what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, but, but it's not, but you're not the, you don't have the note. He's not, he's mm -hmm. responsible. He's not responsible to the bank. So for the debt to income, right. Th mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. A mortgage, right. A debt to income. If the debt to income is 49.99 and excluding the car payment. And if the car payment comes back on because he, Peter, you know, Smith decides he's not paying it anymore. You got to add that payment to your total debt obligation and your debt to income is going to go above 49.99. And now you're going to be above 50 and you can't do a conventional loan. And yeah. there's no explanation that can overcome that. So all right, so we're we're, that, we're, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna um, look into that. And, I mean, I mean, they, I, if they I change the, the guideline, if they, and now and I know what kind of loan you're doing, and I yeah. know there's no way that that guideline is not there. They're second that. There's there's there, there's no way. I guess we'll see because we yeah. got we got the conditional loan approval. So all right, I mean, just because that's and it's, we submitted. We submitted the, you know, everything they re requested. Right. You follow so, the, you follow the logic though, like how it is. That's, no, no, that I, is I, the, the logic. How they do it. The technicality, absolutely, yeah, like, by 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 all means. Um, but I would have been the case, man. I would have been, I would like every person would do a, would buy a car like that and just have somebody else pay it for twelve months. Well, this months. is this is the thing. This is the thing. I learned this. From, I learned this from a deal that we did in 2020, where we had a, a situation, not personal to me, um, but one of my buyers, she had co-signed on a vehicle, 
and all we needed was uh the 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 friend her friend to attest to the fact that she was the one responsible for the payment she was the one making the payments and we were able to close you said the key word at the beginning though she had co-signed on a vehicle she co-signed oh no that... no 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 not co-signed she oh. bought it under her name she she bought it under her name there's there's no way that is <laughs> that is absolutely not a, that's not a guideline like you cannot do that because you it, that, it, it doesn't make any like cuz follow right it's the it's the the same logic because they're not they are not obligated to pay to anybody Mm -hmm. Your clients, your buyer's friend, even though they're making the payment, they're not obligated to pay. Like, but again, it, it, depends like on, it depends on where, like, for instance, we had to show proof of where the payment funds are. 100%. You have to, you have 12 months bank statements, 12 months canceled exactly. checks, or 12 months bank statements, not the invoice, 12 months, like the bank statements, if it's automatic withdrawn, or mm -hmm. if it's a check, it's 12 months canceled checks. You have to absolutely have that. But yeah. you also have to have the other party be on the on the note for the loan like okay like that's uh so we're gonna see we're gonna see yeah. if, if, if i get my keys <laughs> we'll, or not we'll talk <laughs> well no we gotta i i gotta look at the i gotta look at the conditional approval and i gotta uh -huh. look at the situation make sure it's you know what i mean so we can come back and up, update right but you, gotta, yeah, you know, I, sure. I gotta see the conditional approval and i gotta see the whole situation so i kind of but in general, the guideline is you cannot exclude uh, another debt unless the other person is on the on the note for that for that payment. Okay. And, and again, it's 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 simply the there's nothing to obligate that other person. So ultimately, since you're responsible, you have to be hit for the payment, even mm -hmm. if the other person's making it. Well, what we did, we 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 put together, we drafted a promissory note, um, and again, we drafted a promissory note. Uh, we signed it in front in front of a public notary, and you know he's been making payments ever since. So actually, now uh, I met him through Turo, and now we're actually we just put him through the credit repair process, and um, he's gonna be a you know future home buyer. He might end uh, might end up um, hooking up up with you for his uh, pre approval. <laughs> So, not, if not if he's got another car payment <laughs> not if well he's no we'll car make sure <laughs> we'll make sure we'll make sure we, we get that taken care of all right no, no, and i gotta and i gotta look at the i gotta look because i mean and there is like look 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 how easy it was when you were describing it you said she co-signed for a friend like you know no, what no, I mean? no, like, no, but, so that you but, can the words can be messed up so i got like we can look like, i gotta look when i look at it like i'll see the the, the condition of the approval and we'll look at it and you know again we'll come back and, and update it here because it's a good thing so people can kind of see these these are like these this scenarios is real, this is real real scenarios mm -hmm. yeah yeah no 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 i can tell you definitely he's not he's nowhere near the uh the loan when it comes to my situation but yeah i remember the same scenario she had because she had three vehicles financed um, two of which she was not paying herself. So, and again, it was that deal that taught me that golden nugget. Um, with working with that, that lender at the time, we didn't know each other. So that was the deal that taught me that. And, and, you know, I've, I've been able to help other people understand that too. So, um, the auto industry now with all these repos, right? How does that compare to what may or may not be happening or anticipated with foreclosures. Oh, the, the, that's, that's part of the problem, right? There's the, the buyers are on the sideline because mm -hmm. the media is telling them that there's going to be a housing crisis and the, 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 the like 2008. So people are waiting on the sidelines. I've, I've had people ask me, like, tell me, I, I market's going to crash like in an eight. I'm just going to wait. Cause I bought a house for 50,000. <laughs> so I'm going to wait to buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It's not happening. Because see the thing about the difference is, and I explained this last week when that first the first day or second day when mm -hmm. I did the the roller coaster the chart yeah 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 it was four million properties in two thousand eight on the market yeah I know there's five hundred thousand now mm -hmm. like it's insane you know what I mean it's a it's a whole Crazy. different market it's a it's a completely different now we're short two thousand homes I mean two uh four million homes <laughs> exactly exactly that's the difference I mean and, and and that's that's the one thing right number one there was too much inventory you know, or a lot more, right, than it is now. But more importantly, the inventory back then, people were upside down because they bought these houses 100% down, 
waiting for the market to to keep on appraising. They bought at the top of the market on a on a on an adjustable rate mortgage. Mm-hmm. That when the market stopped, because there's only so much that you know, there's only so much it can imp- grow. You know, a single family, right? A house that's three fifty forever, you know, it can only go up that much, right? It can can't go up to a million if it. You know, I mean, it's just only a number that it's got to stop somewhere. So when it stopped, the 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 bubble kind of that's when it burst right that's when it popped mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but people had no equity now there's like at like 37 percent of homes in america are paid off have no mortgage mm-hmm. then uh, it's 50 something percent 57 percent all the loans if you take all the different loan categories that are are that are below three percent mm. so you know you know you got a mortgage at three percent where are you going? You're not moving. You're not moving anywhere. You're you're staying put. Even if you buy another house, you're keeping your house. You're not. I mean, three percent. You rent it out. You're gonna Close, make money. Closest it's, it's thing to free money. Free money. Is- you're <laughs> gonna get. So so that has on an appreciating to, asset. An appreciating asset. So so that's one. Like that's one issue. And then you th- you you add to the that like to the fuel to the fire, or not or well not fire in this case, right? That people have equity in the house. Mm-hmm. Like in 2008, people had no equity. They were upside down. Yeah. Now they have equity. Whether it's 10,000 or 100,000, it's still equity. Nobody's going to walk around, you know, nobody's going to walk away for, with, for, from 10 grand. It's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. You know what I mean? People are not going to do that. If even, if even if you can't make the payments, you put the house on, the, you have some equity, you put on the house for what you owe and you'll, you know, get out of the house. I think people will do that rather than go through the pain of a foreclosure. Because mm-hmm. uh, obviously that foreclosure sets you back, and it's you know it's it, it, you know it's hard, right? It, yeah, it three plus your credit, years, and you can it, buy it again. Just, and... Yeah, it's just it's it's it impacts your credit, impacts everything. So I don't see people walking away, just walking away from houses mm-hmm. like they did. Now they're going to be again, walking away from cars. If you're more solutions oriented, like for instance, the situation that I had with the truck, I I automatically knew I, I didn't know about forbearances, but I was like, all right. There's this person, he's renting for me full price. I could be capitalizing on him renting it from me. But also, here's a long, a more long-term solution. Like, like, let me just sell the vehicle where he has a need, and it meets my need as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So um, I think uh, people now are, are thinking a bit more creatively overall and seeing that there are solutions. You don't... There, there's plenty of opportunities to get out of that foreclosure situation without having to go through the whole process. Correct. And that's why, like, I don't, you know what I mean? That will aid. And I don't, I don't see that what these, you know, people are expecting that this crisis. Now, there are some regions in the country mm-hmm. where during the pandemic, people did some crazy things and moved like to some, uh, there's certain like, you know, uh, California. Washington, mm-hmm. Seattle, Washington, California, uh, Phoenix. Well, Austin. when you say did some crazy things, what they you overpaid. Mean? They overpaid a lot more than than. Oh, they, 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 they went crazier than like some of the stuff we saw here and overpaid oh, yeah. for properties. Um, oh, yeah. and, and, you know, like it, in in California, right, Silicon Valley, like tech. Where are the layoffs that you've heard about since last year? Where where have all those layoffs been? I've been in the tech, I've all been down there. So those people are out of a job. Now, a lot of them are going back to work and, but that's, that's having an impact on the market. So mm-hmm. those areas of the country, they, they will definitely see an, a, a, a reduction in, in activity, uh, a reduction in pricing, but nothing, still nothing resembling anything like the, like 2008. I mean, you know, you know, the California prices are insane, right? Million, everything's a jumbo. Always, yeah, yeah. You know, perhaps <laughs> you know somebody went and you know and crazy and paid you know way too much for a property they shouldn't have paid, and now they're upside down and they're going to be foreclosed. And I mean, hopefully not, but that that's definitely going to. I mean, that could happen here in Florida, but mm-hmm. I think the 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 magnitude of the excess money that was paid was mm-hmm. in these markets, and those markets are going to feel it more for sure. But yeah. that's like pockets. I mean, that's specific to those areas. Fortunately, Florida's just, I mean, I, I call it the mecca of the world. Everybody wants to get to Florida at some point, whether they're coming to visit or moving to Florida. Uh, it just, everybody gravitates towards Florida. So I don't 
I don't foresee anything dramatic happening in this market like what people are thinking might. Hmm. I, I, <laughs> nothing like nothing, n nothing in the data points to that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I think you have to at least I'm learning and I'm you know, you have to look at the data and, and you have to let the data guide you. You can't just ignore it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh the fed has been ignoring it <laughs> so <laughs> at our own pearl so but. so when it comes to the banks uh does the collapse of one bank lead to the collapse of all banks or oh, think about it. look look what happened with silicon valley i mean silicon valley on wednesday it was fine mm -hmm. and it was it was shut down on friday i mean it took two days to for that thing to happen because when mm -hmm. you make a nowadays, like in the past, right, to make a, a bank run, like a bank run is you go to the bank and take your money yeah, out. Yeah, pull out. Yeah. You got to go to the bank. You got to get out of your house, drive, go to the bank, get in line, stand there. Now you just go on your phone and do like this and transfer your money and see you later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it happened, like, you know what I mean? From Wednesday to Friday, like it just happened. People just started taking the money out and they're, oh, and so. It, People get nervous. Uh, I read last night. Uh, I got to go back. Well, let's see if I, because I read stuff and it, like, you know, I don't necessarily save the article. So I got to, it's all kind of here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, in the, uh, in the 200, uh, 200 million, the amount of, Nah, I'm not even going to give a number. No, forget it. I'm going to scratch that because I don't want to give. <laughs> I don't want to give wrong information. And I and I read so much stuff. Like you know what I mean? I just, yeah, just yeah, yeah, reading yeah. and seeing. And we'll have to go back to that. Yeah, I got to go and find it. When I, I'll, I'll see if I can. If I can find it, I'll you know see what it is and get the actual number and and you know so I can you know share it. You know, not give wrong information. But it's the you know the 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 pressure that's going to mount on on these smaller banks. You know, as a result of this, it's going to be, it's going to you know what I mean? It's going to it's going to cost pressure, right? It's just going to additional. They're already they're already liquid, as we you know as we know. So mm -hmm. this this new run, like so, it's not like it can definitely happen fast if people get nervous about it and and see the like, okay, I'm going to take my money out, and and that's what like I said, the article I was reading is the amount of money that has been taken out in the past two weeks from smaller banks into like the large four banks. Yeah, because that's what people think, right? People like okay, the the, the four banks those are too big to fail they, they, the the government will keep those so they they take their money out of the smaller banks and put it into the into the because uh, some of this is, i don't know if you if you if you we haven't talked about this uh there was a big to do la, uh, last week with uh with uh the secretary of the treasury with janet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yellen yeah the one that you said she chooses who gets bailed out right that that's what you said in one of the hearings correct okay exactly okay. and that's what they're going back to right yeah, exactly so they uh wh who's on first did you ever uh uh you know what that is it's probably too young you don't know who that you don't know what that is no, no abbott no, and no. costello you don't know no, who that is no, no, no. oh my god <laughs> youth <laughs> put me on put me on <laughs> so abbott and costello are this comedians you know black and white right i don't even know what year like old 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 i i was a kid i used to you know watch it when i was a kid mm -hmm. um and they have this skit google it afterwards and, and watch it it's, it's actually funny who's on first okay and it's both of them are talking and it's a monologue you know it's a it's a dialogue, a dialogue between both of them and who's on first and i won't tell you the joke because you got to listen to it but it's this big confusion thing that ha that they talk about uh, and the Wall Street Journal, I believe, is the one that kind of that was the headline, you know, Janet Yellen and, you know, who's on first referring to that. And after the show, like watch the go to YouTube and watch the thing and you'll see what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. because on Tuesday, she said, uh, you know, she said, we're, we, you know, we bailed out the banks, we, you know, S Silicon Valley. And if we need to do it for other banks, we're going to do it. Then on Wednesday. At a different in a different event, she said, "No, we haven't talked about bailing anybody else." Actually, and on Tuesday, she said, "No, it's got to be a super majority by the Fed. I have to have my vote and the White House, and we'll decide who needs it." Right? That's what she said on 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 one day. Then the next day, she said, "We haven't talked about bailing out any other banks. Like that hasn't been a conversation." And mm -hmm. then on Thursday, she said, "We've used these tools that we have, and you know, we can use those tools again anytime we need it." So yeah. who's on for like, is it, is it, are they going to bail out all the banks or not? And 
So you said, yes, no, yes. So nobody really knows. And that aids in the confusion of the market. So who gets, who get, aside from people's personal credit, who gets the impacted the most with all these repossessions in auto loans? The banks. Because the, that's I mean, going to do, that's going to put pressure on the bank because that's money that they're not getting. Mm-hmm. Right. So they do a loan. They expecting their, so remember, the banks take the, the money that, you know, people who deposit money in the bank, in essence, we're like shareholders. We're partners mm-hmm. of the bank, right? Because mm-hmm. the bank has our money. We invest in the, we're investors in, the, in, in this thing, right? No, nobody really thinks about it that way, but that's really what we are, right? We, you take your money and you put it in the bank and mm-hmm. the bank takes that money, keeps 10% on deposit and takes 90% of your money and invests it. Yeah, so we're, we're the, not investors. We're, yes, we, we are loaning them money, right? But we get little to no ROI. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, you can definitely, but but you're 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 really you really own the bank. You're really an investor into the bank. I mean, the real technical, if you boil all the fat, is you're you're and you get a, a percentage, right? Mm-hmm. Up mm-hmm. up north, we call it the vig. You know, you get the vig is the interest, the juice on the on the money that you you know you invest into this bank. They take the money, they do their thing, and then they pay you a, a percentage, right? So yeah. what's happening is what's been happening for the for the past year or so, right? We talked about the in year the the yield curve inverted and the two year, right? All that stuff. We already explained all that stuff, right? So what's been happening? The rates were zero. Mm-hmm. How much were how much were you getting at the bank at and in, in your savings at the bank uh, during the pandemic? I don't know, point zero 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 one zero. Nothing, because the, the nothing. The banks are like keeping your money and nothing, and they were taking the money. And then they were out investing it and right and doing all mm-hmm. these crazy things, which is fine. There's nothing wrong that's with that. What that's, that, that's, that's what they do. That's fine. Do. Yeah, yeah. But but they're greedy because they don't really care about you and I. They only care about themselves and their pockets and what they do. So and, and they've been investing money and they have been making more money, right? Because this, you know, the bonds, which is where they spend a lot of the, you know, invest a lot of the stuff, which is save, have been going up in value, right? So now the I mean the the 10-year bond was at 4% three weeks ago, mm-hmm. right? And people, oh my God, it's going to go up. And so it went up and went from like almost zero to 4%. That's the return that people were getting, the, these banks are getting, right? Mm-hmm. The problem is, is the we're not going to talk about Silicon Valley, what they, you know, that the value, they bought them lower and that's where they're upside down, right? That's a different topic. What I'm kind of talking about now is that the banks started making more money on the interest, but they didn't pay the depositors. They were still paying them zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. So now when this crisis started happening, if you haven't seen it yet, I have, I've already seen it. You're going to start seeing now not, you're going to start seeing all of a sudden like CDs, banks saying CDs, you know, 5%, put a CD for 5%. Like are you going to start seeing. So uh, essentially the, the promotions, right. With the higher returns to get people to park their money with them. But the point is that, they could have those promotions. They they have been able to extend that extra income, if you would, into the depositors. They could have they could have because they're getting there's a yield on savings. There has been a yield on savings, but the banks are still doing nothing. And mm-hmm. you'll see now they're going to start. You know, but I saw a, them yesterday. That's a, CD that's a matter of greed. That's a matter of greed. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. But but people don't know that. People at home are like, oh, my money's safe in the bank. And no, they're just, they're just, they're putting money into the bank. And, and so that's what happens. So like to answer your question, can, can, how easy can, can people can panic and oh, like my money's, I mean, if you, if you work all your life, you got your money in the bank and you don't know, like you're, you're going to go and take it out into what you think is safe. Some people mm-hmm. think it's safe having a cash. Some people think it's safe buying gold. Some people think it's safe buying silver. Some people think it's safe buying Bitcoin. Have you seen Bitcoin? It's gone up. It's a, yes, there was a 20, almost 28,000. So eighteen thousand, not too long ago. I mean, it's just, and it, you know, now they're saying it's going to go back towards a hundred. It could, you know, if it breaks certain thresholds, it could go mm-hmm. all the way up to a hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, because people don't know where to put their money. They won't. They, you know, that when you, you know, you have the money, where do you, where do you put it? It's got to be safe. So yeah. that's that's the the issue with banking right now. It's it, it's it's very fragile. It's definitely fragile, and people could could still be affected because again, if the commercial it, it, it does happen that way people default on their on the loans the banks lose them they invested that money thinking there was going to be a return because remember that's not the bank's money that's the depositor's money 
Mm -hmm. So they deposited, you know, they took a million dollars and they did a commercial, a million dollar commercial loan. That that pay that person has been making payments. Now it's going to adjust. Now the payment is going to go up. I don't know, three, four, five percent. I mean, everything is up, right? The interest has gone up so much that the margins have gone up. So their caught their payment is going to increase dramatically. You know, from one month to the next when this thing adjusts. So yeah, the person's payment goes up. The building is vacant. There's nothing like there's no other than the money. There's really no, you know they don't live there. It's not like a, a, a prime you know a, a residence where the people live in the house and they. If they don't pay, they're going to no, be I think homeless. It's, it's, it's they can walk away from that and be like, oh, I can't, I can't pay this. It's definitely going to be prime time for creative entrepreneurs. Hmm. Absolutely. But the, the, but the banks, oh, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it always is, right? A recession is always the people that are ready for it are the ones that always make out on a recession. Mm -hmm. I mean, Warren Buffett's been making out like a bandit since this whole thing started. He just keeps on making money. Like he just... Yeah, well, the compound effect, it definitely took over for him many, uh, well, no, many it, years ago, many it, years well, ago. Yeah, but even <laughs> in, even the, in, like in the investments, I mean, this is off topic and I'll, I'll two minute on this, like, you know, what did he do in the, before the, like, before the elections? He invested in rail. Mm -hmm. He owns the railways transporting the oil. Yeah, he yeah. He yeah, up yeah. to the south because new administration change they canceled the the keystone pipeline they canceled the keystone no more keystone but the oil is still getting transported it's not mm. coming through a pipeline it's coming on trains mm. there's no difference <laughs> I think the rail is, there's no difference right it, there's a pipeline it's built inside a pipeline and it goes through a pipeline or it goes inside a tank on rails and then, and gets in the same over. route there's no there's no difference but guess who owns the rails who bought the who bought the train tracks? Like who bought them? I didn't even know that. Oh, no, not a lot of people know <laughs> that. Not a lot of people know that. See, that's the thing, right? This is we we you know, in order to know that, you have to do work and you got to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And we just we're lazy. We just we look at the news now. We, now not even the news, it's social media. Yeah, right? yeah whatever we see on the phone and oh, that, it must be true. If it's on social media, it must be true. Mm -hmm. But that's you know that's on risk he's you know those are the people that make money that's if you if you're prepared if you have finances i mean that's what i'm preaching all the time is to people like be prepared have an emergency fund have savings have because when stuff like that you know recessions hit that's when the opportunities are to strike yeah yeah we got to get to planning your next uh financial workshop because i definitely want to get on my budget situation too absolutely man absolutely so, um all right well We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to discuss the future of smart homes and what's next in real estate technology. I like so, smart um, homes. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of smart homes. So tomorrow's going to be exciting. Uh, it's Robert Murillo, broker associate with Timoroa here at Compass, Florida. License number BK3373543 with John. John Sepulveda, Origin Point, and MLS 1309244. Checking out. Talk to you tomorrow, guys. All right. You caught another episode of the DM, Florida Real Estate. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.